Well, we tried out this full game with all the brawler cards and all of that, and not a lot of you are gonna agree with what I have to say. But please, don't defend this game, because you deserve better. Last time we talked about the new special attack Bakugan that was introduced with this generation, and with this new generation comes a brand new game. In that video we briefly went over the basic game, but now we're going to take a look at the thing I've been holding out on, which is the Gen 3 Advanced game. The very first Bakugan game was a marble shooting game where you had 3 Bakugan, 3 gate cards, and 3 ability cards. Both players setting a gate card on the field with edges touching and both take turns rolling their Bakugan. If two Bakugan open on one gate card, the gate card opens and gives bonus G power based on the Bakugan's color or attribute. The ability cards used can interfere with the game, like giving more G power to your Bakugan. The winning Bakugan claims the gate card and first player to 3 gate cards wins the game. Gen 2's game was where you have 3 Bakugan with character cards and a 40 card deck and up to 3 Nanogun cards. Both players set up a field of hexagonal metal pieces called Baku cores with the edges touching. Both players roll their Bakugan onto the field at the same time. If both Bakugan open, they compare B power, adding any bonuses the Baku core offers, Bakugan special abilities, and play any cards you may have in your hand that interferes with the game. The winning Bakugan stays open and deals damage to the opponent's deck based on their damage rating. If all three Bakugan are open, the damage is all combined for a team attack. How you can stop damage is by flipping over a sideways card that might have the stop symbol during the damage step. The player that runs out of cards in their deck and takes one additional damage loses the game. Besides the terrible trigger mechanic and the idea of life decking game in general, the Gen 2 Pro game was a remarkable and unique TCG game to play where the outcome of the game is mainly determined by your skill of rolling marbles. It was a game that had a lot of potential and was genuinely a great game because of its heavy reliance on dexterity rather than lucky draws. But unfortunately, with Spin Master's incompetent ability to properly market it as a TCG rather than a toy, the game never made it to its full potential. And after Bakugan finished with their final season, Bakugan Legends, Spin Master hit the hard reset with Bakugan Gen 3 complete with a brand new game. In this new game, you require 3 Bakugan with at least one of them having to be a core, 2 metal gate cards, and 6 paper brawler cards. Your Bakugan character cards must correspond with your Bakugan toys and additional gear cards for your special attack Bakugan if you want. The Bakugan come in 5 different colors, red, blue, green, purple, and white, and each Bakugan are divided into species or clans, dragon, mammal, insect, avian, aquatic, and dinosaur. There is also the Misfit Clan, the seventh clan that is an additional clan for certain Bakugan, mainly the Bakugan that belong to main characters from the anime, Drago, Trox, Ventry, Hammerhead, and Bruiser. And there are even Bakugan that gain bonuses from having Misfit Bakugan. Bakugan in this generation have three stat lines, red, green, and blue stats. Most of the time, one stat is very good, one stat is somewhere in the middle, and one is just worse than the rest, perfectly balancing the Bakugan to ensure fair play, and whichever stat you use is determined by whatever zone your Bakugan lands on, on the gate card. Some Bakugan may also have bonus abilities on them represented by symbols on the character cards. Some Bakugan may get bonus based on the Bakugan on your team, while some might have these special symbols. Reroll allows your Bakugan to reroll or respin once if it's losing a fight. Draw allows you to flip over one more brawler card to use. Crash activates if your Bakugan touches your opponent's Bakugan in any way. Enemy territory activates if your Bakugan is open on the opponent's gate card. And Versus activates if your Bakugan is fighting a certain Bakugan. In this generation, just like the previous pro game, turns are taken simultaneously. At the start of the game, both players shuffle their deck of 6 brawler cards and places it face down on the table. Both players then yell, GATE CARD SET, and places their two gate cards in the field side by side close to each other. Both players pick a Bakugan and send them onto the field at the same time, and the battle is determined by what zones your Bakugan land on. If only one Bakugan open, then the open Bakugan automatically wins. If both players miss, then you roll again. If both players open, then it's time to brawl. Both players flip over the top of the Brawler card deck to use for the battle. Brawler cards are cards based on characters from the anime that give bonuses to Bakugan stat lines, and some Brawler cards even give more bonus stats to certain stat lines based on the Bakugan's color or species. Compare the Bakugan stats from the zones you land on. If your Bakugan landed in between two zones, then you can choose which zone you want to use, which is kinda cheap! Compare the two active stat points, add the bonuses the Brawler card may give, add the bonus from the gear the Bakugan might be equipped with, and any special abilities, and the highest B power wins. The winning Bakugan returns to the bench still open, and the losing Bakugan returns to their bench closed. The first player to get 3 Bakugan victories wins the game. 
In a way, this iteration of the game is very reminiscent of the original Bakugan Battle Brawlers game down to the part of gate cards and ability cards, while also incorporating the flip card idea from the pro game and the simultaneous turns. But here lies the problems. With the way the gameplay is set up, the game seems to focus purely on luck rather than skill. The first problem is mainly the special attack Bakugan over the core Bakugan. While the core Bakugan you're able to maintain a certain degree of control over where they land, because of their abysmal stats compared to the special attack Bakugan gets with a gate card, it makes the decision to include more than one Bakugan more harder. Not to mention, special attack Bakugan are just physically superior, being able to knock away the cores to prevent them from opening on the gate card. Whether that's a good or a bad thing though, I'll let you be the judge. Special attack Bakugan, while they have very high stats, because they are the only ones to be able to use gears, they have no degree of control. Where they land on the gate card is completely randomized if they even open at all. The whole joy of Bakugan has always been the dexterity check game that it always brought. It doesn't matter how much expensive cards or amazing overpowered Bakugan you may have, if you're unable to have the skill to roll and land your Bakugan, you won't be able to do anything. This is what I mean when I said in my last video that Special Attack Bakugan loses the heart of what Bakugan was truly about. Once you let it rip and place it on the field, you have to pray to Pyravian your Bakugan lands on something good, while on the previous games, you actually had to work on the skill to roll and open, and if you messed up, then you can't just buy an upgrade, you just had to get good. Basically in the previous games, if you messed up, then get good scrub. In this game, once you let it rip, then good luck douchebag. The second problem is the gameplay mechanic of the Brawler card deck. How come the game now has to be relegated to a top decking game? If you flip over a Brawler card that has no actual use to your Bakugan, like it's not the required species or color to gain the bonus, then you're just crap out of luck and that's one Brawler card wasted. In the original game and the pro game, your ability cards were able to be freely played to interfere with the game and turn it to your favor, with the main idea of strategizing the timing of when you play those cards. But in this game, it's completely randomized with no sense of control of what you play or when you play it because you are forced to flip over and use your brawler card when you are in a matchup. I mean sure, the cards have consolation bonuses for other stats, but with the power cap now, it's barely worth it. So in order to fix this problem, it seems like the only way to ensure a success rate for being able to gain boots efficiently, you are encouraged to make mono builds. All three of your Bakugan needing to be in the same clan, same color, and all your brawler cards have to work for that specific clan or color. Or at the very least, if you're building mixed, at least 67% of your brawler card deck has to account for 2 out of 3 of the Bakugan you use. And the most infuriating part about this is that the design choice seems absolutely intentional. If you watch the Gen 3 show, one of the main plot threads of the show is that all the Bakugan are separated by clans rather than coexisting together, with the exception of the Misfits. So that means that this game sucks on purpose! And the game itself even readily admits to encouraging mono building, as there are Bakugan like Special Attack Bruiser and Purple Titanium Dragonoid that gain bonuses and become good if your entire team is all the same ones. And getting the Brawler cards is a bitch as well, because they only come in certain products, meaning the only way to get the cards you really want is potentially buying a set you don't really need. There's no booster packs or bundle sets to get more variety of Brawler cards or specific ones you really want. It's just based on pouring money into things you potentially don't even want in the first place, and you're essentially paying between $20 to $40 on a single with extra plastic. And even still, the products that we got right now come with at most 5 brawler cards from the battle pack set, meaning that we're still one off from actually being able to play the game. There are also a ton of questions left unanswered regarding the game like what happens if you deck out a brawler cards? Is there a refresh system like shuffling all but one card into the deck or something? What would happen if someone uses a team of Bakugan that have all draw abilities? I know the game seems designed where they don't expect the game to last more than 5 rounds, but even still, the possibility is still there. And that's where the third problem comes in. The rules are also not clear about the most common question in games involving cards. Duplicates. While the general consensus say that your brawler deck must have only one copy of each card, there is no official ruling on it, meaning someone could have 6 Dan cards if they really want to. There is also no clarity on what the main rules are. We had to wait over half a year before we finally got the advanced rules and the symbols explained to us in a video. 
Like the previous Gen 2 game, there is no clarification text on the cards, more than likely because of the same issue they faced before regarding translations to distribute them globally. Also, what happens if an open Bakugan ends up knocked off of a gate card? Does that mean it just can't fight? The game has way too many holes. It's completely luck based and no communication or clarifications from the design team to make up for it. It's just a throwaway children's game that kids will eventually get tired of. So in conclusion, this game takes one step forward and ten steps back. While I do see the strategic elements in selecting your Bakugan as well as Brawler cards, and the viewing pleasure of watching your Bakugan do actual physical battle, the entire game in of itself is just dreadful. Making a game completely reliant on the heart of the cards idea from Yu-Gi-Oh and taking every single bad thing from the previous games and splattering it all in this one. The only skill involved is with your core Bakugan, but other than that, everything else is all based on chance and the blessing of Jesus. This just isn't what Bakugan is all about. Sure, this game is enough to satisfy the kids for a week, but it's just missing so much crucial and important elements that could have made this game good. A rule book? Patches? Fostering a competitive community? Actual thought and death being put in this game to make something different, but still good instead of shoving it out the door the first second it works? Screw all that noise! The idea of the three-step format being determined by landing really could have been good with maybe added abilities or bonuses on land. The strategy with the brawler cards could have been good if you just put more thought into its gameplay design like being able to freely play them instead of relying on Luxag or giving them bonus abilities. But no! They treat this franchise like TIE Fighters! Make them cheap, deploy them in bulk, and it won't matter if it's crap or not because sheer numbers will result in success. They stuck to this idea that seems largely unfinished and unbalanced all because of faithfulness to the source material. In terms of a game that is good enough for the kids, this is all it is. But I don't see stores having real competitions with this anytime soon. And I know, someone probably already stopped watching this video and written an essay in the comments saying stuff like, It's a reboot! You're stuck in the past! Get over it! Or calling me a hypocrite for defending the Gen 2 TCG so much against legacy fans. The difference is, with the Gen 2 reboot, when they introduced a new Bakugan game, the game was actually good and served as a worthy successor to the original game. Actual thought, planning, direction, and effort was put into the Gen 2 TCG and it made it a very fun game. This is just a half-assed rush job. I would absolutely go to bats for this game if it's actually fun. I know, such a foreign concept. And I already recognize that it's different. It's a reboot. They have to make changes. I completely understand. But it's gotta be changes that actually can make the predecessor proud. And this game is just not it. They broke pretty much everything to fix something that was not even broken in the first place. And I'm giving this game a 4 out of 10. The biggest positive I think about this Gen 3 game is that it made me reminisce that despite all the Gen 2 Pro games flaws, it could have been a lot worse. So that was my thoughts on this full Gen 3 game. The previous games had so much ideas and mechanics that you could have taken inspiration from to create something that was actually worth playing. And then this happened. It's not good. <sighs> oh well. At least we'll always have Mia.